Hello and welcome to part 10 of the Boland's HT Snowplow project. In the last video we made up the last of the parts and put them in primer. And Dad had a day free during the week and has painted all of the parts now. But we had a few challenges with that in the fact that uh, it's quite cold and wet here in the UK and the only heater we have is a diesel space heater which worked okay but the workshop still stinks of fumes but ignoring that let's have a look at the parts some parts we've also put polish on like the blade which has come out very nicely you're meant to polish blades so that when there's when you're plowing snow the snow just rolls off the edge and doesn't stick to the paint we've also uh, polished and painted the wear strip that's come out nicely uh, the main frames come out nicely and we've polished this part because this is the actual part that will have moving things on it. All of the pins have come out nicely. The hydraulic cylinder is probably one of the worst parts but it's still not too bad. And same with the feet. This, as These have come out okay-ish. But push rods have come out okay. Springs have come out quite well. And some parts on the swivel bracket have been a bit ish, but otherwise it's good. Now that we have all of the parts in paint, we need to fit up the blade. We're going to take some of the parts off the bench so we have some workspace to put stuff together. And then when we have everything together that we want together, we'll start putting it on the tractor. The first two parts we're going to put together are the main frame and the swivel bracket. But before we do that, we're going to put some grease around this area, which is where the bracket will actually swivel and on the underside in an attempt to protect the paint and make it a bit more smooth while it's swiveling. And we'll also put some in this hole, but not too much because you may remember the pin that actually goes through there is drilled down the centre and then out the side with a grease nipple allowing us to grease in there while it's in there. We've greased up both of the brackets and we've put a bit of grease around the outside of the pin and in the hole and let's try and put them together. We've turned the frame upside down now and we've knocked the roll pin through so it goes through this part of the swivel bracket and through the pin so that when we swivel the bracket this part moves and not the pin. We've turned the frame back over now to the right way up and the only thing left to do now is to put the grease nipple back in the top of this pin because we took it out to tap the pin through. Now that it's all greased up, this part turns very smoothly. But now onto the hydraulic cylinder, which we've lubricated the pin that will go in here inside and out and in these parts of the hydraulic cylinder. Just put this through here. And I'll get the bolt and this goes through here. For the front pin, uh, we're going to use these washers over the top, which probably wouldn't have been original, but we're doing it to protect the paint. I'm just going to use this soft headed hammer just to tap it through.
We've got the washers and split pins on now, on top and underneath. But the old elbows in the hydraulic cylinder, you can see we used when we were painting the cylinder to stop any paint getting in it. But now we have complete new hydraulic leads with new elbows on this end. And then the poppets that go into the tractor on this end, which isn't a common size in the UK. We've put some PTFE tape around the new elbows and we've uh, threaded them in a tiny bit. The manual says that uh, this elbow should be parallel with the cylinder, so at the angle that it is now. And this rear elbow should be at 45 degrees pointing up like that. So I'm just going to tighten them up a bit. We've put some jointing compound on the elbows. We're not sure if you should with hydraulics, but we have. Now to put the uh, pipes on. We have the hydraulic hoses on now, and the only thing left to do on the frame is to put this stainless steel bolt through here, which we've been thinking about a little bit. We guessed that it would kind of be to limit travel at first with the D being in this plate, but at the same time the hydraulic cylinder limits travel anyway because it can only go so far out. So what we also think it might do is to stop either of these plates bending under pressure. The next job is to put the wear strip back on the blade. And to attach them we got a set of 100 stainless steel carriage bolts. We couldn't actually get the right size here in the UK, so we imported them from America, which, as usual, meant that the shipping cost more than the actual product we were buying. We've gone a bit overboard on the originality. Originally, it would have spring washers and normal nuts under here, but and you'd expect nowadays that we'd use nylock nuts, but we're going to do as original with spring washers and normal nuts. So I'll just quickly put the rest of these in. You can see we've got the uh, end ones in just to keep it from sliding. Final one. Boom. We've flipped the blade over now and we're going to fit the feet and guess which one's new and which one's old. This one here is the one we made up, which we're going to put in place of the one the elephant kicked. The last thing to do on the blade is to put the decal on which we got from Restoration Decals, along with this other decal to go on the swivel bracket. And they do decals for Bolands, Wheelhorse, Westwood, Cockadet, and probably more. Um, and they've done a really good job of these. So we need to measure up, 
where to put this on here and I need to find a place to put my restoration decals decal. There's no video of us putting the decals on because it was one of the most stressful things we did in this project. But now they're on there, they look very good. Both the one on the blade and on the swivel bracket. And thanks again to Restoration Decals for those. We've had a bit of a move around now and with how these two parts are laid out on the bench here you can probably guess what we're going to be doing next. Putting the blade on the rest of the frame. And it uses these tiny pins through here which goes through this and then the springs which hook around those indents on there and then go around here. So this is going to take at least two pairs of hands, if not more. And hopefully we'll be back in a minute saying, ta-da, here it is. We've now got the blade on the main frame with the springs on as well. And the next job is to put together the push rods, which you can see we've got all the components together with the clovis forks and the nuts. But what we now need to do is to adjust them so that it's 26 and a half inches from the centre of these holes to the centre of these holes. And once we've done that, we'll be able to put this all on the tractor plus a few pins. We have the push rods adjusted to the right length now and we're going to try and mount the blade and the main frame on the tractor. And for this I'm going to need the help of my cameraman. We've got the blade roughly in position now. And it's time to use a couple of the pins we made earlier. So for the pivot, this goes here with one of the bigger pins going through there. And then the push rod, this goes onto here with one of these smaller pins going through. And then this small, another one of these smaller pins will go through there, which is connected to the hydraulic lift. The last thing to do is to connect up the hydraulic pipes, which the rear one on the hydraulic cylinder goes to the left outlet, and then the one on the front of the hydraulic cylinder goes to the right outlet. After we've done that, then we can take it out for a drive and you'll see the whole assembly. happy with how everything worked now and we put some cardboard under it just to protect the paint because we're overprotective of the fact that we've just painted it but we did get a light dusting of snow overnight and we've collected it all up into a pile and it's taken us a long time to do that are you ready here it is now it hasn't melted that's just how much we got let's hope for some real snow soon Testing went well and we're happy with how everything works and how it looks. Even if we may be scared to use it because of the paint. And we're a bit short of time today and we were hoping to do a summary kind of overview of the project but that'll have to wait until next week. And project done. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 
Please subscribe to my channel, like this video and see our other videos. More to follow as we do more on this tractor. Bye!